Hey kids, welcome to Stylish Rumble Animation Time Thing. So, I have just been made aware that today is a Wednesday. <laughs> so usually I post Wednesday mornings, but we had a long weekend this weekend, and I've just completely lost track of where I am in life and what is going on around me. So we're a little late on this. Hopefully I'll get it posted tonight, but it might be tomorrow. Who knows? Uh, the one announcement is that tomorrow, or today if I end up posting this tomorrow morning, Thursday the 24th is going to be my webinar. So hopefully you guys have all signed up for that. There's like 240 people signed up. And we're going to have a good time talking about particles on the Two Boom live stream thing. It's going to be super fun. And the funny thing is, I had a meeting yesterday and it was Tuesday. So today had to be Mo like Wednesday. I don't know. So anyway, I have a plan for the summer. I want to do, rather than like longer 20 minute videos, I'm going to do a series of short quick tip tutorial stuff. I just want a series that people can go to for quick tips on various things. And so I wanted to make a new intro. This is my Styles Rumble letter fall. And you can see, so like, don't, don't bother with fancy exposure or something. Just throw everything outside the frame. It's, it's gone now. That's fine. So I want to do a little bit of motion graphics for the quick tips. I'm just gonna have quick tips slide in underneath here. Um, and I'm gonna show you guys how to deal with text a little bit. Now back in the old days when we first started on the Toon Boom Digital Pro program, we didn't have a text editor. <laughs> we just had to do everything in Photoshop or write it by hand. So let's write our text here. And we have a text editor because we're from the future. We're gonna write quick tips. I haven't decided on font yet because like I said, what day is it? I don't know where I am. You can just scale up. I'm gonna use my select tool here. You can also using your text tool here, you can select everything and you can affect the size of your text in here. You've got your kerning. Hopefully you guys know who kerning is. It's the spacing between the letters. So here I can space them a lot or a little bit. The indent says so if you want to indent your, your paragraph line spacing. Auto kern. This is going to automatically kern your stuff. So before I ever got into animation, I used to work in a screen printing place with this old guy named Bob. And he'd been a graph designer since like 1956 or something. He's a real veteran. And we had to put all the letters on the the hockey jerseys and stuff. And the kerning, good God, could that man talk about kerning for a long time. If you're interested in motion graphics <laughs> or graphic design, these are the types of exciting things you'll get to learn about. So that feels all right to me. Should we like just run through all these? I feel like I should just do comic sans and just make everybody sad. Yeah, Comic Sans. I'm going to do it. Quick tips in Comic Sans. So uh, what I've done with Stylus Rumble, I've actually hand-drawn these letters. My font is a hand-drawn font. And each one is cutting the pen. So I, if I take this U away, you can see that it's got a little bit of a fat edge around. So it can give you that outline. The Quick Tips doesn't need anything like that, but that was just done with a cutter. And all these guys are just animated into place. This one, because I've just used the editor here, I'm going to group these guys. And I want each of them to be on its own separate layer. So once you create something with text, it's not something you can edit here with the contour editor. And if you use the select tool, it's going to group them all into one clump. What we're going to do is right click, come down here to convert, and then break apart our text layers. So you can see these little boxes have popped up over all our text. And now that's separated each of the text pieces into its own little unit, but you still can't edit it with your contour editor. So if you do want to go in with the contour editor, what you need to do is right click again, convert and break apart the text layers one more time. And then you're going to get paint. So it's, it's the, paintbrush tool, that kind of thing. You're going to get that with some sort of a decent amount of contour points. Yeah, it's not too busy. But if you want to go that far, I think I'm just going to leave them in these boxes for now. But if you do want to edit them further, that's how you do it. You'd convert, break apart your text layers as many times as it takes to break them down in these pieces. So now I've got all of these pieces and I need 
to separate them onto separate drawing levels because I want to animate them separately. I'm just going to do some lazy stuff where I just pull it all in from the side. Let me just extend my exposure. So all this stuff is falling down. I'll just have this come in from this. Maybe I'll come, come in from the bottom. Let's try that. So what I'm going to do is select my text again. I'm going to right click. And this button here, distribute to layers, I often hit this by accident because if you're far enough down and you right click, it's right here. And if you're drawing hand, like if you're sketching out something and you accidentally hit distribute to layers, it might separate it up onto like a thousand different layers. So I don't like that it's right here. I want it to be somewhere else, but it is, it is handy when you need to separate things. Bloop. So now I have all the little text pieces by separating them onto layers. And each of these letters, this first one's just empty. Cool, we'll get rid of you. So each of these is separated onto its own layer. And it seems to have gone right to left, all the way across. That's good enough for me. And I'm going to select all of these and hit this button here, which is add peg. Bloop. Now all of them get a peg. We'll use our fancy fan node. Extend our exposure. I was kind of hoping it would extend the exposure because the first one did, but it did not. Right. So let's slide it in from the side. I'll grab all my pegs holding control. And this is important. If you're animating in Toon Boom, pegs are so super handy. You don't even know how handy they are. But you need to know where you're animating. So if I select the text like this, so I grab this master peg and slide it over here, put that on my first frame, and then everything comes into frame around, we'll say here. And I slide it in here. Now, I have only put animation on this top peg. But here, my goal is to have all these things doing a little bit of a separate timing. So if I use this top peg, then I'm going to be counter animating when I'm using all these guys. So generally, if you're doing stuff, a bulk of things, you would start with the top peg. But because I know I want all these guys to do separate things, I'm going to select them all separately. You can also select them in the scene. Oh, you could just, you know, select them like this. And you're selecting the drawing nodes. So if for some reason you have your animate using animation tools on, then you're going to be animating on your drawing. So if it's off, you will be animating on these topics, but you're not using this one. So the important thing to, that I'm trying to get across here is know which pegs you're animating on and make sure you're animating on the ones you want to be animating on. Does that make sense? <laughs> so here I'm going to slide my text in and I want it to overshoot a little bit. Slide it back. Let me make sure it's on odd number. And then I'm going to do an overshoot and I'm going to use all these pegs again. Make sure I'm using these guys. And just have them go a little bit farther. And then I'm going to copy and pull that frame over. Boop. Now they're all sliding in. Not fast enough. Let me start them a little bit later. Quick tips. Amazing. Well, I, what I, one thing I want is the timing on this has got to be improved. So right now it's just sliding over and back at the same pace. I want this to, to be an ease. And then this is going to be a big ol' ease. Still not fast enough. Faster text. Let me put them in a box. All right, that looks okay. Whoop. Now I've done this super exciting animation on a bunch of different second pegs. So now I want to make it so that the timing is not so even. I want to have some of them come in faster. I think I want the these ones to come in first. So I just want my S to come in a little bit faster than my P, than my I. So what I'm going to do, all these guys, we want to come in a little bit slower. So let's just select all these and press plus plus. And now those are coming in two frames later. So my S is coming in a little bit faster. Actually, I'm going to move this. I'm going to just put this all on twos right now because I like twos. Okay, next I'm going to select everything from here down. And if I move over, you can see it's all the way to the I. Plus, shift, plus, plus. Shift, plus, plus. Next class group, plus, plus. So now our letters are going to come in one at a time. And I think I'm going to just have it move back a little bit because 
Styles Rumbles happening a little bit sooner. So let's just grab it all and drag it back a few frames. And then we need them to leave. <laughs> so what we could do is grab this whole thing, copy it, and then control B to paste special. And here in our options, we can reverse it. Boop. So now everything we've just pasted in reverse. Boop. Wee. And maybe that's good enough. Maybe that's what we want. We can adjust the timing if we need to, but since it's a quick tip tutorial, I think I should do the cheapest thing possible, which is just to reverse it. Boop. I'm going to render this out. How long is it? 103 frames. So that's like four seconds. I think that'll work because I'm going to hack it up into two pieces. So here is the and. I'm just going to separate it a little bit and render it out as one video, and then I can crop it in my editing software when I'm adding in my pre-roll and my ending. So let's add a master peg to control all of these together, and we will just slide that along. Now there's a little pause, so I'm going to be able to edit that out easier. In comes the text, out goes the text. Huzzah! Yeah, so now I've got a two second intro for our quick tips instead of a nine second intro, which is what we've been using for our longer stuff. And just in case you guys have not come familiar with the right node, this is where you're going to tell it how you want things to render. I don't want drawings this time. I'm going to go down to the movie, customize. Uh, I don't need sound. Uh, this is all sort of compression stuff, but generally the, what you get is pretty good, especially if you just need an intro. Export and I'm going to render the right nodes. This is a right node. I would like to render that right node. Thank so much, all of those. Beep. Now I've got myself a little intro video and I do some quick tips for the summer. That's my summer plan. I'm gonna do some quick tips on some of the little nodes and stuff. I usually don't go over some little animation stuff, just five minute things that can help brighten your animation day. So if you have any questions, or ideas for videos, please leave them down below because as you can tell, my life is barely put together. Uh, thanks for dropping by. Like, share, subscribe, all those things internet people ask you to do. And I'll see you in the next video. We're at the webinar. Woo!